we have our switch panel in, our lights are in, everything's wired up, and working. Right. If you'd like to see how we did that, stick around. All right, welcome back as we continue on the build of our trailer. Today we're going to get ready to start working on the roof, but before we do that, I want to finish up some electrical stuff. So I've got that panel, some switches, a USB port, and uh, the lights that I want to get installed. We'll get our plate fastened on, and we'll test everything out, and then we'll come back and talk about the roof. So, let's get started. Alright, so this is going to be the layout for my switches and my nice little uh, USB port charger. And it has a nice little on-off switch, so uh, power is not always on. We're going to locate the switches here near the bottom. Put the USB port right there. And I've got me a little location stick, so when I put it into the uh, trailer, that it sits in the right spot where I want it. So, i got my marks laid out where I want my holes. We're going to take a drill, put a pilot hole on each one of these, and then we're going to take the appropriate size spade bit, and from the other side, we'll drill through, get our holes set, and then, we, then we're able to go ahead and attach our switches and USB port and pre-drill some holes that we're going to use to fasten into our trailer and then we're ready to install this thing. So real quick before we get started I purchased three of these switches and one of them was the correct switch. When you supply power to them they should not illuminate until you touch it and then the LED ring light comes on and uh, two of them had power continuously so out of uh, taking a chance I emailed the uh, company in where I purchased these told them what uh, what I had they asked me to send, send them a picture of the little barcodes of each of the packages they came in sure enough they said they sent two wrong ones so they resent two more switches and now I have the correct switches so when I put power to this no lights will illuminate until we touch them on so that's cool uh, I hate the thought of power just being on especially these little blue LED lights that are in these rings are pretty bright so inside that cabin they keep the thing well lit and if you're trying to sleep or you know if you like total darkness those wouldn't work Now we can install our uh, switches. USB goes right here in the center. We have a little ring that we're going to tighten that down with.
then uh, I do have a reading light that's coming and we will mount that right here. You may or may not need another switch. I won't know until I get those lights. So we'll tighten everything down. We'll get a couple of more uh, connectors here going and then we'll install it on our panel. Now we'll get ready to install the panel. So I have all my connectors, front lights, rear lights. I'm going to put the uh, rear lights on the right and front lights on the left. Then we'll hook up the power, hook up the USB, set it in place, drill for our uh, screws to fasten it in. Then I have one set of wires left over for when we put in our light here on top. So, set that in there. I've got that little ridge here on the bottom. That locates it. Got a little mark here on the side. And I have a centering bit that we'll use to center our holes. Then I'm going to come back with a smaller bit, pre-drill my holes here. These are brass screws, number seven I believe, and we're just going to hand tighten those in. I don't want to use a drill because brass is pretty soft and if that drill slips it'll round out the round out the head and then you have to replace them. Beautiful. USB on off. I don't know if I'll keep that cover on there. I'm not sure if it's necessary. And our switches. Now we uh, hook up our lights, hook up our battery, and test them out. Hopefully we don't have to pull this off for a while until our uh, other light comes. Let's get the lights set up. Looks good. Alright, so we have our panel in and we have our lights installed and it looks nice. The uh, ceiling fan has its own switch so we didn't wire it into here so it's got a on and off here and I think that's gonna do it. So now let's uh, hook up our test battery make sure our USB works and our switches still work and see if we have light alright so once again we have our test battery set up I have a battery charge on it these batteries are like 15 years old I have about 10.2 charge I mean they're dead so but they'll uh, they work for a little bit of testing have my leads connected and uh, now we're ready to test our lights once more pretty confident these are going to work Oh yeah, very nice, very nice, and our USB, which I don't know if I knew this or not, but when you turn the switch on, it also gives you a power readout, and uh, kind of happy about that. Also, when I purchased the lights, they sent me one of these little rinky dink uh, LED for the USB. So if I plug that in here, 
turn off these lights. If I turn my switch on, I've got a little bit of light. I think that's kind of cool. And you can position it. So that makes a nice little reading lamp. And also the little readout for your battery. Cool. So that works and I think it looks pretty good. And no need to have the LEDs lit up during the night so you can find the switch. You just reach up and hopefully you can just kind of touch the switch and boom, you're on. I like that. It's looking pretty sharp. Lights kind of blind the camera here, but it is a nice soft light in here. And uh, nice and happy with that. Looks good. Now I'm really excited about how the lights turned out. The switch panel looks good. And uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. So, I do have a, another pair of lights that are coming, and I think I might have a little design change of where I'm going to install the lights, and then something a little special for the switch plate that uh, I think would trick it out really cool. So, now, let's talk about the roof. So, I have this eighth inch bendable plywood laying over the top of the roof here all the way down to the front and of course it's going to come up short because it's only eight feet long but uh, I've decided I am not going to use this for the roof I would love to have a one-piece roof but this stuff is just too thin and I don't know if you can see it but it waves more than the Pacific Ocean oh my goodness it would be good for uh, small projects with a lot of bracing but I don't have a lot of bracing here on the top so I don't really have a good way of fastening things down and you can see a huge dip in here I've I've set this thing up here and played with it so many times trying to figure out how I could get this thing to lay flat and it's just not going to work so plan B I will need to make a store run and purchase a couple of these door skins. They're eighth inch thick, they're birch, and uh, that's going to do the trick. So uh, the, only, the only downside to it is instead of one piece on the front, it will end up being three pieces. Uh, I'll have a 48 inch piece, and then once it goes to the front, another 48 inch piece, and then I will use this bendable plywood for the bottom to come up to the front and of course we will also be installing it here on the back so that is my uh, plan B is to use this material here instead of this bendable plywood uh, I think if I had to do this all over again my next choice would be to bump up to a quarter inch it would be a lot more rigid and uh, wouldn't have all these relaxed bends to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this off of here, roll it back up, put it in the box. We'll save that for a future project. And then I'm going to lay up this uh, piece that I have here and show you the difference, how it'll take shape and what my next step is going to be. All right, so I took that bendable plywood off, I rolled it up, and I put it in the box with the other pieces that we will use for the front and we will also use for the back and any future project. And then I stuck this uh, piece that I had left over from a previous project in its place. And I gotta tell you, I'm a lot more happier with the way it takes shape. So, uh, the problem is, I do have this piece, and I do have this piece. But, I had cut this on a previous project, and this is not quite 48 inches wide. So there is this 
edge on both sides that uh, is kind of shallow as we can see here and it's not cut very straight <laughs> so uh, I will not be able to install the ceiling this weekend as I planned and the store, the only store that is within a 50 mile radius that sells this material is closed on Saturday. What lumber yard closes on a Saturday? So during the week I will have to make a store run and I will pick up a couple of pieces here. We'll probably cut those at about 49, maybe 50 inches wide. We'll leave it overhang half inch or an inch on each side. We'll get it fastened down and then we'll come back with a router and trim it on this edge. I'd like to have a nice flush edge. I know that, you know, I could do it like this and I could put the phylon on and cut it flush and then fill that with a uh, some sort of sealant like 5200 or something. But I don't want to go that route. I want to make sure that it fits on there. It's nice and flush on both sides and it looks good and uh, this is going to work out a lot better as far as taking the bend and of course up in the front we'll be able to uh, make a seam across our spar here so we'll have to trim that piece back three quarters of an inch or so and then we'll take another piece we'll run it from there down the front and located on this spar just above these braces here then we'll be able to take our bendable plywood from the bottom roll it up to this point here so this front section will be a lot shorter it won't have as many waves and uh, it'll look a lot better than if I use that eighth inch bendable plywood which <laughs> man that stuff is very thin it's flexible. I mean, you could probably wrap it around a pop can, but it just will not work for the top. So believe me when I say no one is more disappointed than I am because I really wanted to get the roof on this weekend and uh, I didn't anticipate the store that I can purchase this plywood at would be closed. So, but we did get something done. We did get our lights installed, we got the uh, paneling for our uh, electrical area installed, we got the switches installed, the USB port, and all of that is functioning good. Uh, when the other lights come in, I'll probably remove that panel, go in and clean up the wiring, put some wiring ties, make sure things are out of the way. I have a, uh, a little plastic... Uh, covering that I will put over most likely on the positive post just so things vibrate move around they are, they're not going to short out on me and uh, I'll sleep a little bit better at night knowing that so man I could have got a long ways so with that being said I'll make a store run during the week I'll get a couple of sheets of this uh, eighth inch plywood we'll get it cut to fit We'll put it on top and then we'll get that installed we'll install the back we'll install the front and we'll get this thing sealed up then the next step would be in, to install the phylon I guess the only good part about this is had I had the plywood I'd be working on the ceiling and the interior would still need to be finished out I hate going back to finish something when I have the chance to get it done so I got it done with that being said, that'll be the end of this video. Please do stay tuned because we are going to get that roof on. And uh, give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs up. And please hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any uh, episodes coming up. Hit that little bell notification. And uh, that'll be your signal that Batman's back on. So, uh, until next time, please. Stay tuned.